Welcome to the Scottish Fiddle Channel. I'm David Gardner and I'm here to share my love of Scottish music with you. But before we go any further, please click on the thistle down here in the corner so you can like and subscribe to support my channel. So join me with the Williamsburg Strathspey and Real Society on a live stream recorded September 5th, 2020. Hello everybody. Good day to you all. Somebody just popped in. Let's see who that is. Somebody else. We got two folks. Hello, hello, hello. Who am I talking to? Hello, Anne. Good to see you. Thank you. We got Anne. Oh, Veda. Hi. It's good to see you. Fun, fun, fun. Got some interesting tunes this week, um, and I'd like to talk to you a little about a bit about um, what we can do about our next um, collection. I think we've nearly there's MJ and Wojo, two for the price of one, and um, so yeah, I'm 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 finding that uh, looking for new tunes in this. Uh, in this collection is becoming more and more difficult because I feel like we've played a lot out of this collection. So I'm going to be looking for another collection for next week. So um, I'll try to get the the um, the name of it to you as soon as possible. As soon as I find it, I will give you the link so that you'll know how to get a uh, get a hold of it. Um, it's going to be in the public domain, so certain certain. Um, Collections are going to be off limits. Um, most of the ones that are not in public domains aren't online anyway. So, but we've got plenty to choose from. I'd like to get um, the nineteenth-century ones tend to be a little bit more interesting, honestly, because they 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 cover um, they cover the eighteenth-century tunes, but they also have more um, well-known modern ish ones i say modern for 19th century that shows you how much i play in the 18th century but um this is our a like so so there we are and i don't know if uh, any of you have looked at my YouTube channel, but I'm starting to put more and more stuff up there. Um, some of them, uh, there's a few of the, the live streams that we've done here, but um, I'm starting to put more like specialty stuff on the YouTube channel. Um, most recently I did a, um, I did a video on how to play Gilly Callum the sword dance correctly for dancers. So the right structure and the right tempos and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to be doing more uh, and more of those things. I um, I did promise to put up some um, some videos about. Um, oh, thank you. Spread the word. I I'd, I'd like to see if we can. We're we're over 50 um, subscribers now, which um, I look at the other YouTube channels and they've got thousands of people with that. I just got started, um, but um. I promised to put some videos up about um, ornamentation and how to how to approach that. So um, that's probably going to be coming pretty soon, uh, a video on how to do ornamentation. I think I'd also like to do um, like specific tunes, talking about specific tunes and why they're why they're so popular and stuff like that. So we're starting in the um, in the sky collection on page 30 of the PDF and the original manuscript page is page 15 and um, it's a tune called Biodag ar McAllister which means McAllister wears a dirk a dirk the word for dirk is Biodag Biodag um, and um, it's an interesting tune. It's um, it's a, it's modal. Um, 
It's in the key of A, so you play all the A, A notes. You've got C sharps, F sharps, and G sharps, but you also don't end on an A. You're, it's in, I think it's an E, E mixolydian. Okay, so we're in E mixolydian, which is kind of an interesting key to be in. So. So that's McAllister, where is the Dirk? Uh, um, in the key of E mixolydian, E mixolydian. So um, for those of you that just joined in, we are on page 30 of the uh, Sky Collection. Um, and the uh, the very first, um, first figure goes. They've got the whole thing slurred there. So, and um, again, when you get to those, uh, to the burls, the, they're gritty. So, so you're going to... Okay. Is it okay to end on the tonic instead in these two? Well, the tonic on this particular one is E. This this is not in the key of A. This is in the key of E mixolydian. So you are ending on the tonic in this particular one. Because just th listen to how that would sound. It kind of it, it's kind of weird. So it's not it's not really in A. It's in the key of. I mean, I guess you could. Um, So we're actually a fifth above um, above the, um, the the key of A. So yeah, it's not it's it's not in A. Um, they what they could have done, and this happens sometimes. This is the problem with writing in modes. When you write in a mode, you have a choice. You can either you can either write it in the key of the mode and then put a bunch of accidentals in it or you can write it in the key that so you don't have any accidentals if you notice on on this page there are no there are no accidental no, no um naturals written in but then but then everybody thinks it's in a different key which it is see that's a problem with with modal music it um, modes were invented before we we kind of came up with the idea of keys. So um, that's what happens when you mix an older style of musical um, notation with a newer style of musical notation. They sometimes get confused. Um, one thing you could do, I suppose, is if you were to write it in the key of E mixolydian, is you, you could put, um, so FC, D. So you could you could put a you could put a um a, sh a natural on the D. 
okay? That's one possibility. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, when you're, I've seen that done too sometimes. If, you, if you're in the key of A, A mixolydian, they'll, they'll write it in the key with, with the key of G with a, with a natural sign on the G. That's how you know you're an A mixolydian. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a little complicated to, to kind of explain. So let's, let's try this again. Um, it's, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Everything is as if you were in the key of A, but the tonic. Okay. So, so that's, um, let's try it about a little slower than what I was doing. One, two, ready, and. And I'm ending on a on an E chord, so I'm playing the E first finger on the D string, and I'm also playing a B on the A string as your final note. So like that, okay. Um, some some things that I'm doing in here is I'm I'm actually this I'm using some pipe um, ornamentation, I guess. Um, so if, if instead of changing the note every single time with my bow, if I've got like two E's in a row, I tap it in between. So. So those two E's, I put a tap between them at the very end of the first line using the same bow instead of going like that. I think it, ha it, it flows better that way. See how I'm doing that? tap is, I, I, I can either use my, I use my third finger mostly for taps. There's other people that like to use the fourth finger for the tap. But the, the key to doing a tap correctly is you, you just, you just touch the string. You don't, you don't make the note. You don't do that. You go. It's very light. It's as, it's light or even lighter than what you would play a harmonic. Okay. So that's, that's kind of what a tap is. And it gives it gives it, um, I think, a better flow instead of changing your bow all the time. Um, it's a, it's a nice way to interrupt. Wow, look how long my hair is getting. I never see that angle. <laughs> that means I need a haircut. Okay, so any questions about that one? That's pretty straightforward, except for the key. The key's a little confusing, and I agree. I agree with Anne. That's kind of you see the key of A in the beginning, and you're like, oh, I want to play there. 
Um, that's a weird thing about the Scottish stuff. Um, let's see. The next tune is on page 32. Page 32. And, oh, there it is. Which tune did I decide? Oh, the Duchess Straths Bay. The Duchess there. The Duchess of Buchlu. Buch, Buchlu. I'm really not sure how to pronounce that. Maybe David knows. But you can't tell me. <laughs> I really should look up how to how to pronounce these things. Now it says slowly. Okay, slowly. So, um, so let's let's play this slowly. So this one is an interesting tune because it's it's kind of going from it's kind of going from A and you can see that it's kind of wanting to be mixolydian into kind of an E minorish kind of a thing so sort of E dorian so so this one is is difficult there is a lot of good um Okay, the bass line, the very last two notes of the bass line are A. So I think that they want us to be an A. So the, the, we'll say this one is an A mixolydian. So, so this is an interesting tune. So, so this one, I, I would argue it's in the key of A. And the way that, uh, and the way that you start, uh, end this one in A is the last two notes. You just play as a, as a, as a double stop, the A and the E. Like that. string doesn't want to stay in tune so in this one you can do a nice um, arrow stroke you can do a updriven bow at the beginning I look like Paul Anderson from this angle when I play my bow arm not not my face but my bow arm 
like that, okay? Exploring most of those um, of those sixteenth note. Okay, so and those. So that's some some fun, lots of sixty notes in this one. So let's try this one together. I think my E string is finally settled in. One, two, one. Interesting tune. Interesting tune. By Neil Gow. A Neil Gow tune. So let's see here. What's the next tune on our list? Okay, page 33. 33, the next page. Fill the stoop. Fill the stoop. It's not a stoop, it's a stoop. Pint stoop. Like um in Auld Lang Syne, and um when when he when Robert Burns writes about um and had me doing this uh, pint stout, it's um it's a drinking vessel of some sort, usually a handled handled vessel, some sort of like a mug basically. That's what a stout is, and this is you want to fill the stout. So there is there's the there's the um that's kind of a fun fun name for a tune fill the soap so how many of you thought that when you saw that that it was like stoop but it's not it's a soap So this one is definitely in A. Okay, this is not in B something or other. 
And um, this sounds like a pipe tune to me. Um, these um, these little figures. This this really feels like a pipe tune. Kind of screams pipe tune to me and um most of the time in this book whenever it's a pipe tune they tell you it's a pipe tune so i'm not quite sure why this one um is an exception to that rule but um it's a it's a good tune um and um once you get it under your fingers i bet it could go pretty pretty quickly so Okay, here's here's a bit of a rule for uh, Baroque music, okay? Do you see the first measure there? Now there was a convention that they would do if they if they had a um an eighth note like that, an eighth note grace note into a quarter note. What that meant in the 18th century is that you would play both of those notes with equal time. So it sound it would sound like two eighth notes together. Okay, so the first measure with the pickup would be, like that. Okay, so. Okay. <laughs> Somebody had to say that joke. <laughs> if it ain't baroque, don't fix it. Um, and I suppose I, I I I know actually I've seen this in an 18th century um, I've seen this in an 18th century collection. So I suspect that that's how it was played. I don't think it's. Um, Because if it were, why would they, why would they write the B section the way they did, like that? Because that's basically the same um, rhythm as the first would be done. So I, I, I don't think that the first, um, the first grace notes are actually grace notes. I think those are just straight, straight eighth notes, honestly. So. And on the B section and the D section, whenever you have those um, those snaps, I'm doing that as a as a slur. Let's give this one a try. Okay, a little bit slower. One, two, ready.
go. Aha, got him. There's a fly buzzing around here and I finally got him. Uh, actually, if played completely as written, it's like tea time with those. Uh, yeah, with the appoggiatores. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You can do it that way. So, so yeah, the appoggiatores are. Um, that's a very 18th century kind of thing to do. And Sarah joined us. Okay, so good tune. But I think I, I really think that's probably a, a, a pipe a pipe tune. Um, the next tune is on page 34. We're just kind of going right down the pages here. Page 34. And I decided to do which one? I think the top. Lord Blanters. It's at the top, page 19 of the original manuscript. Uh, yes. Blantiers. Blantiers. I need to look up how to pronounce the names of these things. Um, Half of learning Scottish music is how to pronounce the names of the tunes you're playing. Um, I have a, I have a bad habit of forgetting the names of tunes anyway, so I, I, I don't know the names of tunes half the time if I'm just playing them out of my head. So let's do the Strathspe. That's a neat. That's a very nice stress bit. I like that one a lot. That um, it's it's unusual in a lot of ways. This one just screams of Scotland. So. driven bow in the second measure with those two two G's there. And the last two as well. The last two A's. So you've got lots of nice opportunities to play uh, updriven bow in this particular one, and um, really those um, those quarter notes are really nice places to sit on and just kind of power. That's that's really a nice way to have uh, a nice emphasis. Of Okay, 
so you, you really can this is a you could really be really powerful don't take this one too fast this this is a good so that's one two okay so that at that tempo so let's try this one ready one two ready Wow, what a great tune. I like that one a lot. That's that's a very unusual tune. I, I I I'm very impressed with that tune. I'm I'm gonna have to say that that's one of one of my favorite ones I've come across in this book actually. That's it's very it's different. It's a different tune. I like that one a lot. That that one has such good energy and just drive to it. It's it's um I'm sorry for gushing over the tune, but it's a good tune. All right, what's the next tune on our list here? That was a fun tune. So. Keep the Country Bonnie Lassie, or Keep the Country Bonnie Lassie. So uh, this is uh, page 40. 40. 40. Not 140. Four. God, I can't, I can't type 40. There we go. Below Lord Alexander Gordon by William Marshall, there is a tune, this the second tune, called Keep the Country Bonnie Lassie, or Keep the Country Bonnie Lassie, or Keep the Country Bonnie Lassie. So which one of the words is emphasized? Um, so, yeah. So here's... Here's that tune. Keep the country, Bonnie Lassie. 
So what I'm doing in the and a lot of this is in the second in the second measure. That that little figure there. I'm I'm doing both of the E's down bow and then the those are down bows, up bows. But I don't just stop there, I go. So I come, I do the E, and then I play um, a D into the So I play the E, A, and then I play um, a D into the C sharp. So don't freak out about the 16th notes. Those are easy 16th notes. All you're doing is you're just, you're rolling up. So basically it's just a, um, underneath that is this figure. So, so you're basically going from the A to the E, A, so A, E with that, but they, they're rolling it down like that. Yeah, it's, 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 it sounds great. I mean, it's, it's, but it's not hard. So, so there's. This this tune really s sits nicely on the fiddle. It's um it, it it's a really comfortable tune. So let's let's go a little bit slower. Dee da 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 dee da da do 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 one two three. So there it is. Keep the country bunny lassie. Keep the country bunny lassie. Keep the country bunny lassie. So many different ways of looking at what that 
means. So we're going to do a jig now. And then we're going to do a very popular jig. This tune is used a lot in uh, in country dancing, in um, a Scottish, um, you know, Royal Scottish Highland country dancing, the RCDS stuff. This tune is very popular. We're on page 209. Page 209, and the tune is Off She Goes. Page 209. Or 190 of the original Off She Goes. Not fast. Not fast. First of all, first of all, don't play this one fast. Dum ba dum ba da li da da dum ba dum ba ba li da dum ba di da da li di da da dum ba di li da dum ba di da dum ba di da dum. You should feel that sort of um um. Should feel that note that that rhythm dum ba dum ba dum ba dum. So except we're not actually E. So, so let me play this for you. Okay, so so that's um this is fast. That's not fast. Danceable tempo. Yeah, bum. That's not too fast to dance. Ta ta tum tum. Skip. It's like a skip. Skip a skip a skip a skip. Too slower than that, and it makes it difficult to dance. So just think about people dancing around and you know, kind of. Hopping around. <laughs> now the B section kind of throws people because you've got this. I hardly ever play that all the time. Those are ornaments that are written out. So what I. The underlying, the underlying melody. If you look at the f at the first two measures of the of the second um, stave there, so you're playing the first note, the highest note, and the last note. Okay. And it's rolling up to that. So you can play it this way. Okay. 
Okay, so there's a bunch of different ways to play it that way. I would not play it like this every time. Wouldn't play it that way every single time because I think that's just too much. Uh, I would I would um, switch it off a little bit. Okay, so let's play this tune. And remember the um, da 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 the middle note of a, of, a, of a Scottish jig is imperceptibly short. Ta 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 Pumpity pumpity pump it and pump. Cook it oak. One, two, one. So there's that. Um, on the one, two, three, fourth, on the fourth measure, that trill there in the fourth measure, what I do there is I go. So, so it's kind of a turn instead of a trill. You don't do a, you don't do a trill. I do a turn there. So in context, okay, it ends on an up bow, so I think in this case they are, okay, yes, <laughs> Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, Humpty Dumpty, Humpty Dumpty, Humpty, off she goes. You know, in Humpty Dumpty, there is nothing in that rhyme that says that he's an egg. Nothing, nothing in it that says he's an egg. We just assume he's an egg. But is he really an egg? Maybe, maybe not. So, I think traditionally he was an egg because the earlier publications of it that were illustrated, they showed an egg-shaped fellow. I think he was a king, Humpty Dumpty. Sat on a wall, and he had a great fall, and all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. So, so yeah, off she goes. Great tune. Um, standard, I would add this to your repertoire if you don't already have it. Memorize it. Great tune. Everybody knows the tune. Maybe it was just fragile. Or fragile. It's Italian, fragile. Okay, so that's off she goes. Oh my goodness, this next tune I love so much. Let's see, 199. There's a lot of tunes I'm gushing about, okay? Now, some of you might not like it because of the key it's in, but just never fear. 
Yeah, I'm gonna, we're going to play it slowly. 199. Don't complain. Stop complaining already. Okay. This um, tune is on uh, page 199. Mrs. McDowell Grant. It's, it's not that bad. It's in the key of F. Now, I learned this tune completely differently than what it's written here. So I was having a little trouble trying to translate what's in my head onto what's on. Uh, let, me, let me play it the way that I learned it. Slightly different. No, I learned it in this key. This is the key. So let's let's look at this. This one is um is um you should really play it slowly. E da 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 dum ba da dum ba. and I play the um I don't I don't play I mean you could go straight that way but so let's try this really um Really slow. Ding, da, da, ding, bum, ba, da, da, dum. One, two, ready.
this is a pretty tune. I think this one just, it, it just is a very, very, it's very pretty. It, it's nicely, um, nicely composed. It's in the Gao collection. I suspect Neil Gao wrote it. Neil or Nathaniel, one of the two of them. Um, but it's, it's a really, really pretty tune. Um, and I, and those those little squiggles over over top, a couple different ways you can handle those. That works nicely. And those are not that bad because you have plenty of time. the last note so you got the F so I'm playing the um, the A underneath it okay so sort of an inversion of the of the of the chord very very pretty tune I like it um the Duchess of Bedford's Strathspey, another slow Strathspey. And this is page 197. Going back a few pages, 197. The original, the original uh, manuscript page is 178. This is a William Marshall tune. Slow when not danced. Okay, so um, that that's an interesting thing to say. So when they're danced you need to play them faster so buddy dum be buddy da dum ba dum bum buddy dum bum bum buddy da 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 bum ba dum bum be da da dum bum ba dum be da da bum buddy it's good that's a that's a good tempo for the dancing so so this is this is the one i was worried that you weren't going to like because they But when you're not dancing it, you need to play it a little bit slower. Okay, and let me. I need to shrink this down because I don't have enough space. Seventy-five is seventy-five enough? No. I need to shrink this down even more to maybe sixty. There we go. Now I have all the notes. Slow and not danced is entirely how I play. Yes. <laughs> Nothing wrong with playing things slowly. So, so let's play this slowly. One of my favorite parts of playing something in the key of B flat is that last that last chord. So nice. And also in the key of E flat, you get this nice chord at the at the end. It 
really pretty, really pretty. So this is this is a really really gorgeous piece of music. You see the tiny little um, notes. You can play those if you just if you just put your uh, second finger down. Now, there's nothing wrong with playing those straight. Actually, playing them straight when you're playing it slowly is a really nice effect. And it kind of turns it into a march for a few seconds. Really pretty piece of music. So let's try to play this one together, okay? One, two, ready, and... Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. So um, follow, follow a lot. If you're a, a violin type, um, this is a good one to actually use your violin chops and play it really pretty, and play, um, you know, play the play the the marcato um, places there in the third measure up there. It's really pretty, and as you can see. If if you're uh, if you read the bass line, it's as with most William Marshall tunes, it's through composed as well. So so it has a very nice bass line that you can play. Um, if you have a piano player, you can do that, or if you have a um, a, a guitarist or a, or a bass player who can who can play the the bass line, it's a lovely bass line. You can um, you can see there's a full chords, you know, triads. Um, written out in the third stave. Um, really, really nice. Nice stuff. Um, so, what's the next tune? Uh, page 53. Okay. <laughs> I just play slow. Nothing wrong with that. Page 53. So, I chose to play The Soldier's Joy. So, let's talk about The Soldier's Joy for a second. The Soldier's Joy is probably one of the most popular fiddle tunes of all time. I can't really think of many other fiddle tunes that are as well known and popular as The Soldier's Joy. And some people don't like it because it's, quote, overplayed. And so what I generally say to that statement is that if it's boring to you or if it's overplayed, 
it's the it's the musician's duty to to make it more interesting do something different with it if you if you know this one backwards forwards upside down and so well you can play it in your sleep then you can also do stuff with it which kind of make it unusual so so instead of just saying if somebody says let's play soldier's joy now remember <laughs> i can so quickly um if you if you if you're in a session or something like that somebody yells soldier's joy and then a whole bunch of other people say oh god not soldier's joy again. you know that's not fair because sometimes the people that are are shouting out soldier's joy this is one of the first tunes they learned and the tune that they're comfortable with so um play the tune and play it well i mean it's it's a great great tune and this is actually one of those tunes that i'm going to do a, a youtube video on um because I think it's it needs to be talked about a little bit because it it is such a it didn't get to be overplayed by accident it's it's a good tune so um and also um if you look at the if you look at the last measure of the whole piece it ends like this now what does that tell us about the tune it tells us that the tune is a hornpipe. This is a hornpipe. A lot of people don't realize that that Soldier's Joy is a hornpipe. So the one of the most popular tunes in in the world is a hornpipe. So there's you did do all sorts of fun stuff. Um, I, I was I was reading um, the comments as you were going by, and um, somebody I think it was Ken that said you could play scales, play a D scale going all the way up and all the way down and stuff like that. Just so many things that you can do with this tune. It is so versatile and and it it's so fun and and you and anything you do with this tune can can improve it. So. One of the, one of the things that I I did, so, which was fairly simple but fun, instead of going, so you know you got this and you got this. Those are the main notes. So you. So all I'm doing is going, 
and then rolling down. And also, one way to do variations is to slow down things and take notes out. And then you can do some, some chords. So there's there's no end of possibilities, okay? So um, so if you're bored with the tune, get on board with it because um, and let, do yourself a favor, record this tune on your on your phone or something like that of you playing it. Or if you want me to do it, I, I can I can I'm gonna I'm gonna be putting I'm gonna be putting a um. Uh, definitely a, a YouTube video on this and, and talk about all the different things that you can do with this. And at, at the very end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play just a straight tune for folks to, um, to play over it and, and mess around with it. I think, I think that'll be a fun video to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it and try, try, don't play this too, too fast. Oh, I almost forgot. One of the things that people do to this is they kill the tune too. They'll, um, don't over slur things, okay? Don't do this. That, 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 that over slurring. Violinists tend to do that. Uh, they'll slur it too much. If you're gonna slur it, go do the shuffle thing. That, like that. It's it's a lot more interesting than da and diddy da and diddy da. Uh, Kim, don't feel bad. A lot of people do that. A lot of beginner um, students do that, and then they, they hold on to that for a long time. Um, it is easier that way. Okay, let's talk about easier. Now, a slur is a way to, um, is to emphasize or, um, or to phrase things. It's, it's a phrasing device, uh, slurring. Uh, and anytime you do anything on your instrument, it should be for a musical reason. Um, and if it happens to, if the musical reason happens to make it sound nice or better, that's a perfectly good reason for it. But if making something easier is the only reason that you're doing a slur, you should think about why you are slurring. Because if it's not improving the sound of your phrase, you should not do it. Now, this slur makes it sound better. That slur makes sense. But just going... That doesn't really improve, improve the phrasing in any way. In fact, it kind of wrecks the phrasing, to be true. Um, and so, um, so I think that, um, that, that would be the reason. Um, and, and if we're, yeah, I mean, I could, I could talk about <laughs> phrasing and musical reasons all the time, but, um, and speed, uh, if you, if you get 
really fast uh, playing really fast can be very exciting and it can be very exciting for the um for the listener too but if you are playing really fast you still have to be clean and accurate so make sure that you're being clean and accurate if you are speeding up um i tend to be able to um the faster i go the i i can actually do more separated that way um so if i want to play this just stupid fast So I can play that really, really fast, but it's not very musical that fast. It's hard to be musical and fast at the same time. It's very, very difficult. So, so I would recommend not going too fast and try to actually get more music out of the tune than tend to go crazy fast on things. So let's let's play this tune one more time at a reasonable tempo. This is a really good tune if you're ever playing. Um, for a Virginia reel, play this tune at least once or twice. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> You may have noticed that I did the last section twice, which makes sense because you would be then going A, A, B, B. They've written out A, A completely and then only written out one B for some reason. I'm not quite sure why they did this. So that turns it into a one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. 16, 17, 18, 19. It turns it into a 24 bar reel. There are 24 bar dances. And so that might be why they had this written out this way. And so for a 24 bar dance. But there are more 32 bar reels than there are 24 bar reels. But if you want to, if you want to tune for a 24 bar reel, that's, you can do it the way this one's written out. Um, I, it just sounds better to. I agree with you, Kim. I like it better with the two, two B A A B B. So, um, so we got one more tune on the list, and I love the name of this tune. It's so funny. Dogs bite Chapman. <laughs> Is on page fifty eight. Page fifty eight. 
Dogs bite Chapman. So let's look at this one. This one is what, what I like to call twisty. <laughs> it's a twisty tune. Um, so in order to get all these, um, this is one of the, another one of those tunes where you gotta leave your fingers down. So try to keep your fingers down in the B section, particularly that that D wants to stay. Look at how little I lift my finger. I slur this one. And that's a phrasing thing. Sounds too choppy to me. So I like to slur this one. So let's try this one slowly, okay? D a dum ba dum b da da. Ready? One, two, ready, and.
this kind of squaring, I can hear what you mean by phrasing, plus it's very pipey. Yeah, this one is kind of pipey, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, this is a this is a really neat tune. So I like that one a lot. So we've gotten through all of our tunes, all ten tunes, and next week we'll have a new fiddle collection. We're gonna put um we're gonna put the sky collection um to rest a little for a little while. Um so we don't uh, kill it. <laughs> uh, but um, I think um, I'll, I'll let you guys know what what to what uh, what collection we'll be working out of. Um, I haven't quite decided yet. Um, it'll probably be off of imslp uh, dot org, unless I can find another one in the um, Internet Archive. Um, I saw I saw another one, um, the Johnson uh, Johnson collection, which. I'm not as familiar with but um but yeah and thank you all for 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 being here i always appreciate uh, our saturdays together it's always really nice um and thank you all again those of you that have um contributed i do very much appreciate it, it helps out a lot and um this um uh, this week has been kind of crazy for me so it's been really nice uh i've, I've been trying to get uh, my my classes um, organized. We have to create all sorts of stuff online now. We're working with a platform called Canvas that I've never worked with before and none of my teachers have either. So I'm in charge of two departments and they are all asking me questions and I don't know how to answer them. So this has been a really nice way to get away from mm. that for, for a few minutes, um, for an hour and a half. So thank you all for the opportunity to be able to do this. I love uh, being able to play every week um, keeps keeps my chops up as well, which is which is good. So I hope I hope it's keeping your chops up, and um, uh, look out for another um, in, um, YouTube video. If if and spread the word. If um, if you have have people that you know that are interested in this kind of music, just tell them that um, that I'm doing a YouTube channel and I'm I'd like to get get this information out to more people. So um, thank you all again. Have a great week. Wish me luck uh, on uh, school starting up again. <laughs> it's going to be like drinking out of a fire hose. So, Peace, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>